What up, be geeks and fellow Dragon Ball fans, and welcome to my Dragon Ball Super episode 67 review. All right, dudes, so let's get talking about this episode. This episode was surprising. That would be the key word to describe this episode, dudes, was surprising, because there was a lot of moments where I was kind of like, what? <laughs> Are you kidding me? Like, this episode thrown us off track on what we were actually expecting in the episode, like, completely, from the get-go, dudes. First off, I want to talk about how Zamasu wasn't actually killed by the Genkai boost from Trunks and his super awesome spirit sword that he done. Um, that wasn't enough to kill Zamasu, and I can appreciate that because... Like um, a lot of fans have stated before in the previous episode, they didn't really like the fact that Trunks killed him off so easily because he's supposed to be immortal. But Akira Toriyama, being the genius that he is, decided, you know what, Zamasu is not dead. As a matter of fact, he is far from dead. And what happened here was, Zamasu actually became the universe around him and covered the entire planet with his negative energy. Hence, eradicating the entire human race or every living creature that was on planet Earth. Obviously, except for, you know, Trunks and the gang, because they were protected by some sort of barrier. This was cool. I like this, because Zamasu really shown again that he is one of the greatest enemies of Goku, Vegeta and the gang. And um, he can't be stopped as easily as a Genkai boost. So... What happened here then is kind of like, what got me confused actually, there's a, mo there a moment here dudes that confused the hell out of me. It was when Goku decided to go Super Saiyan Blue and he couldn't. He powered up and then his power went. And then Vegeta was like, what are you doing Goku? And then he went to do it himself and then his power went. And then Supreme Kai stated that it must have been the final Kamehameha that they done as Vegito that drained them of their energy to become Super Saiyan Gods. Which doesn't make any sense to me because it shouldn't take much energy for them to do final Kamehameha if they're merged into one because they both do those finishing moves anyway, you know, as a single being. So if they're joined together, they have the combined power to harness the final Kamehameha. Which made no sense to me, but then again, it's not Dragon Ball unless it has plot holes, dudes. But anyway, dudes, one of the key moments in this was when Goku done the Kamehameha, and then Trunks stepped in to do the Gallic Gun, and then Vegeta stepped in to do Final Flash. Now, that was awesome, and then all three beams intertwined together to become this absolutely powerful beam, and it done nothing. It done sweet fuck all to Zamasu because Zamasu has become the universe. I don't know how one beam could destroy a universe. And then, dudes, it happened. It happened right there. Goku realized that he had the muffin button in his pocket. He takes it out and he's like, holy shit, I still have this little button. And dudes, I don't know how durable this button is, for Neverworld actually stated it in his own video that this goddamn button must be indestructible, dudes, because Goku's been through hell, he's been blasted, he's been punched, he's been beat down, he's been blasted through buildings. But the muffin button stayed intact. Like, Ver Neverworld said, this shit must have insurance. But, um, it doesn't matter, dudes. It was great to see that he finally take out the button. And boom, pressed the button. And there he was. The Omni King, Zenosama, appeared. And we were kind of like, whoa. But this Zenosama actually came from this timeline that they were at. So that muffin button was able to contact whatever Zenosama, no matter what the timeline, no matter what... Um, the universe it can contact him anyway, so that was kind of cool What happened there then is Goku just kind of explained to him what was going on and Zenosama did not like the negative energy that was surrounding him He was like, okay, I'm gonna fix this and it just lifted up his little hands and he was just like, oh shit And Goku and the gang were like, fuck, let's get our asses out of here, dudes So they all hopped into the time machine and before Zenosama could display the first This is the first glimpse of his power that we got to see dudes literally just raised his hands to the sky and then kaboom erased the universe completely killing Zamasu permanently and that's the kind of power that Zenosama has now after that then dudes we were brought back to the scene of happiness what we were expecting to see straight off the get-go in this episode but no you know it, this shit just happens and um, everybody seems to be fine and then future Mai finally meets little Mai and like that was kind of cool and then little baby Trunks seems to really like the look of Future Mai, which is so weird. I found that bit so weird. 
<laughs> but uh, it was cool to see that uh, the, the future Mai and the future Trunks were in the same timeline as the present Mai and the present Trunks. That was cool. I like that. And then I want to jump forward where Goku and Trunks went back to the future to see if Zenosama was okay. And of course he was being the most powerful being in the multiverse. Was just, you know, floating in the air like, yo, what's up? And um, Goku just went over to Zenosama and says, here, I'm going to bring you to a cool place. And then Zenosama was like, oh, okay, yeah, cool. I'm down for that because he's like a kid and he has the mind of a kid, but he has the powers of, of God. But anyway, and then what happened there was they transported to Zenosama's um, universe or whatever place Zenosama is actually from in their own timeline, bringing the future Zenosama to the present Zenosama to become friends because Goku said he made a promise to the Omni King that he was going to find someone that he can play with and who better to play with other than himself and that sounds totally wrong but anyway so that was a little bit weird but I thought it was genius by Akira Toriyama to come up with something as twisty as that let's let's face it dudes us Dragon Ball fans was not seeing that coming that was completely out of nowhere and you know you know, I think this was kind of a goodbye to Zenosama, the Omni King, for a while until it becomes relevant again. I know they are planning a multiverse tournament and I really can't wait to see that. So maybe that's when we'll see the Omni King again. Well, the two Omni Kings because there there's two of them now. But we'll get to see them again, dude. So that'll be the next time we see them. But I don't think that'll be for a while now. But now we go back to their own present timeline and their own present state where everything is fine again. Everything is okay. You know, Trunks is happy, Mai is happy, and uh, Whis is bringing them to another timeline because their own timeline is completely out of existence now, thanks to the Omni King. So, it's a happy ending for Trunks and Mai. They're sent to a different timeline where there's going to be another Trunks and Mai, which is confusing. I can see where Forever World was coming from with the timeline confusions in this episode, but look... Akira Toriyama loves confusing the shit out of us. If he never done that, we'd never have anything to talk about, would we? But anyway, dudes, that is basically how the episode ended. Except for the very end, dudes, where Trunks was just about to leave into his new timeline. And he's seen a glimpse of Gohan with Piccolo. Now, this is something that I really want to talk about, dudes. This is something that I really want to touch on. Because this moment right here was kind of a hit to the feels. To all of us passionate, you know, long time dragon ball fans of the community it was kind of like a you know a hit back a throwback i should say to when gohan future gohan was you know brought into the series as a side story with trunks and this is where trunks began this is where future trunks was brought in in the first place was when we were introduced to future gohan future gohan was his mentor and you know he meant absolutely everything to trunks and you know, it was a really emotional moment to see that, that the present Gohan that we know today gave him that familiar look that he knew from his his own Gohan and his own timeline. And it was a hit to the feels, dudes, it was, because we seen Gohan die in that movie and it was one of the most dramatic deaths of Dragon Ball history. And it was it, it, it what triggered the inner power, the inner Super Saiyan within Trunks in the first place. And I think it was the beginning of his road of becoming this very very powerful passionate being that he's become today and this is another topic that i want to talk about if you've seen in the title of this video dudes is a theory that i came up with with why trunks became as powerful as he did and why trunks adapted to all of this power in short periods of time so if we want to go back to the start where trunks was brought into the series we know that trunks was you know training with gohan for a while for months nearly a year and um, then it happened, you know, he was so determined and he did get strong as he trained with Gohan. But as it came to the point where Gohan was actually killed by Android 16 and 17, um, that was kind of it for Trunks. That's kind of what triggered everything in the first place. That dramatic moment, you know, it awoken the Super Saiyan within Trunks and... That is when the beginning of his power started. Now, what I said in the title of this video was that he had a hidden power. Now, this is just a theory, dudes. This is my own theory. What I think is that um, Trunks' hidden power is that when it comes to certain events or, you know, tragic events that occur within his life and he's surrounded by power that he's unfamiliar with, I think Trunks' hidden ability is able, he's able to adapt the power that he's surrounded by. Now, if you want to hear me out here, like I said, it was when Gohan was dead 
that it triggered Trunks' hidden Super Saiyan power. And he has always been exposed to Gohan's Super Saiyan power. And I think that may have been partially the reason why he achieved the power in the first place. Now, if you want to jump straight to the future when it came to the Cell Saga, where Trunks trained with Vegeta. And he was always surrounded by Vegeta because he trained in the Hyperbolic Time Chamber, or the Room of Spirit and Time, whatever you like to call it. And this is where... And Trunks achieved Super Trunks. Now, this ability wasn't achieved on his own. He was surrounded by Super Vegeta. So, that kind of gave me that hint. Maybe this is how he adapted the power of Super Trunks as well. And then if we want to jump even further into the future, where Future Trunks finally made his return. And then he trained with Vegeta again. Being surrounded by the godly key that Vegeta has. And then surrounded by constant dramatic traumatic events that are happening with the Goku Black Saga and it eventually occurred where Trunks harnessed the power of the god or half of it anyway becoming this super saiyan half blue half gold god form we still don't have a name for it dudes but that's kind of what happened here dudes that's how he achieved that power is because he's been exposed to the godly key fighting with Go with Goku and Vegeta, plus that with the traumatic events that are happening on his own timeline, which created this some sort of, you know, or should I say awoken the rage inside him, and this inner power that was... I'm telling you, dude, he has some sort of hidden power, and that's how he conjured the spirit bomb as well, because he was never taught how to do the spirit bomb, but I think fighting side by side with Goku, it may have um, tapped into the power that Goku had, and it's that familiar, you know, sense of, you know, fighting for the people that it awoken this Genkai boost that he achieved in that episode as well. So that is my theory behind Trunks' power. I do think that he has a hidden power somewhere that he's still not familiar with, that he can actually adapt the powers that he is um, surrounded by. And it only takes a dramatic event in his life to actually trigger the abilities inside him. Now that's just my theory dudes, like again, it's purely fan theory. You guys can, you know, you can scratch that all you want, but that's just my own opinion. That's my own theory. And I would love to know if you guys think the same or if you have your own opinions on why Trunks achieves such massive power in short periods of time. I'd love to know, dude. Just leave it in the, the in leave it down in the comment section, dudes. I'd be more than happy to read and con and um, reply to you guys and give my opinions on your opinions. But anyway, dudes, all in all, this episode was absolutely fantastic. I enjoyed every moment of it, and especially all the twists and the turns. Yes, the timeline parts in this episode were a little bit confusing, and it was a little bit disappointing seeing Trunks leave, because I think we're not going to see Trunks for a long time now, unless they bring him back for the, the multiverse tournament, which I don't think they would, but that would be pretty cool if they'd done that. But um, I think this is basically what the episode said. It was farewell Trunks. So it's literally saying goodbye to Trunks. It is a new, it's the beginning of a new arc. It's the beginning of a new era, guys. And I can't wait for it now. Because the preview of the next episode, episode 68, it's about Shenron granting Shenron's wish. And everybody kind of wants to jump on the bandwagon and get a wish off Shenron. But, you know, Goku kept the promise. For um, King Kai finally is going to wish King Kai back after killing him all those years ago. And everybody else seems to have their own agenda. Everybody else seems to have their own wants in this episode. So I think it's kind of like a battle to who gets the wish and why they deserve the wish in the first place. But anyway, dudes, I'm going to end this review of Dragon Ball Super Episode 67. If you enjoyed this review, dudes, be sure to give it a like, a thumbs up, and that'd be super awesome. And dudes, be sure to tune in next week for the next episode of Dragon Ball Super Episode 68, Come Forth Shenron, Whose Wish Shall Be Granted. See you later, dudes.